Today I would like to do something different. I would like to use the new Apple Clips software to give you a review of the Basel World 2017. Not everything this time in Basel was as shiny as the weather. Um, but let's go through the next slides to give you an idea. Let's start with Takoyer. They were presenting their smartwatch, which I somehow find is a disaster. I don't like to have smartwatches from those traditional brands. I accept an Apple watch, but um, a smartwatch from Tac or from Montblanc somehow looks strange to me. Much more I like the traditional watches like the Monza model or the nice Monaco model. But even more impressed I was by the new Otavia models. These are really nice chronographs um, that deserve an in-depth look later on. I proceeded with Senate and my favorite watch was the Senate Pilot Extra Special. It's a special watch really, but um, somehow I was attracted by the design. I was disappointed by the new models of Patek Philippe. I expected a little bit more traditional dials. Those creamy colors um, were not able to attract me. So this year, thumbs down for Patek Philippe. The blue version. One of the highlights on the Rolex booth was the Sea Dweller. What I don't like about the watch, the watch has a nice um, design, I like the size, um, classical Rolex design, but I think that um, the Cyclops on the, on the Sapphire Crystal should be something linked to the Submariner and not to um, the Sea Dweller. But that's my personal impression, but yeah, I would not complain if I could afford that watch. The Rolex with moon face, not as classic as the old ones, but I think one step in the right direction. Customers would like to have Rolex watches with moon face and I think Rolex listened to the market and presented that at the Basel world. One of my highlights was the new Rolex Datejust, here in a steel version with a white gold bezel and a blue dial. That's a quite dressy watch and um, that's definitely something to consider when considering buying a, a Rolex. So in, in nature that blue looks much better than here shown on the picture. Tudor. This year Tudor presented um, some new Black Bay models, um, some two-tone models, um, silver and or stainless steel and gold. Here we go with the new two-tone models, stainless steel and gold. For me that design is very attractive, especially the one on the um, NATO strap was highly appreciated. Um, but I'm wondering if my dealer here in the local market will get it. He still has the old version of the Black Bay with the ETA movement in stock. So I'm still waiting um, him to have the latest Black Bay Black with the um, in-house movement available. But it seems to be a quite long story. A nice chrono from Tudor. Plompin. Um, a nice traditional dress watch. Really like the design. My highlight at the Plan Pain booth was the new 50 Fathoms or Mill Spec. Um, this one has the um, humidity indicator, the, the circle that you can see close to 6 o'clock. Um, that will change the color um, that insert as soon as. Um, water drops on it or some unity gets inside the watch and it's quite close to the original design that you could found several years ago. Um, the case is smaller than the original 50 fathoms. I really like the design. I like that they bring it also with a NATO strip. 
I'm really a fan of NATO straps. And that was also not only a highlight on the Plan Pan Wolf, that was one of my highlights um, on the exhibition on Basel World. And on the Longine Wolf, I really fell in love with the Heritage 1945. That's a kind of dress watch with a golden copper colored dial. Um, quite simple watch, but that one is um, attractive to me and I consider to buy that in, in autumn when it will be launched. I think they will um, launch it for 1,700 euros, which is acceptable for this kind of build quality. On the Omega booth, everything was about the 60th anniversary of the Omega Speedmaster. And here you can see the three original watches, the Speedmaster, the Railmaster and the Seamaster as they were launched 60 years ago. The new and limited versions come in this nice box. Quite impressed I was by the installation that Omega had on their booth. Um, those watches were um, free without any kind of protection so you could really have a close look at the watches here the speedy tuesday version and if you come close to this watch um, they will disappear immediately i hope you will see that in my next clip one second here we go that was the installation i think that one is the standard um, Speedmaster and wait for a second we'll close and the next one will appear with the blue yeah I think the whole booth at the um, Omega booth was about the Speedmaster you can see more of the Speedmaster versions Eberhard a brand that was quite famous a couple of years ago um, they showed a lot of their old watches, of the vintage watches, which I prefer much more than the latest version that they have. They also showed a new Scaffocraft, but yeah, the old one is much more attractive. Some more Eberhard watches. That piece was quite unique, uh, a clock. Uh, a manual clock that you can wind and it will last for eight days on one winding um, shape of a rocket quite nice I would like to have that on my desktop some of the smaller brands are also capable of doing nice watches here you can see the movement of a Kronefeld watch um, that movement was so beautiful and in, in nature it looks so much better than here on the picture and definitely one of my highlights of Basel World 2017 coming to Seiko here on that picture you see the Seiko Presage automatic watch with an um, animal dial the prospect watches the Blue Lagoon versions of the turtle and the samurai the review of the turtle you have already seen on my channel but the major highlights were the separation of the Grand Seiko brand from Seiko. So all the new Grand Seiko watches are branded Grand Seiko only. In the past you had the Seiko logo on the 12 o'clock position and the Grand Seiko on the 6 o'clock position. And now the Seiko logo disappeared and you have just the Grand Seiko logo on the 12 o'clock position. As far as I'm informed, also the companies are now separated. Um, for sure, Grand Seiko is still a part of Seiko, but um, they want to attract different type of customers and they feel now strong enough to, to go through the market with their Grand Seiko brand. And Seiko watches are of astonish, astonishing quality. During the exhibition, I figured out that it is so difficult to make some pictures of the watches. They are all protected um, behind the glass. There are a lot of lights, artificial lights. And with a smartphone, it's almost impossible to make good pictures. But I hope you get at least an impression how those watches look like in real life.
Somehow I fell in love also with the Grand Seiko GMT with a black dial and a golden GMT hand. It was very, very nice in nature. Some Toxa watches. Toxa is famous for diving watches. And I had another chance to have a look at the Rolex Daytona because that is definitely the watch which is on my wish list and uh, which I am going to order very soon. I heard that delivery time is about one year, which is very disappointing to me. Um, but that is the one I would like to have. I hope you enjoyed my quick tour through the Basel World Exhibition. Disappointing was that um, it seems that the glorious days of Basel World and the watchmakers are over. You see less golden watches, less silver platinum watches. Um, the manufacturers are going for stainless steel. It seems that there are some problems in the industry, which also is proven by the figures that you can see. Less turnover, problems in Asia. Um, anyhow, Basel World is a must every year, even that it's not that shiny as in the past and you feel that there are problems in the industry. A mechanical watch is so exciting and to get an idea of the feeling of those watchmaking industry um, is so exciting too and hope you enjoy this short clip with Apple clips and um, I'm also looking forward to give you a next full review on the new watch but that may take some more weeks. Have a nice day. See you. Bye bye.